LC kids, it is time for Kids Church. So grab your snack, settle in, and get ready to learn a lot about Jesus. Um, I'm Miss Jamie, and I'm going to be your team leader for this week. And we are continuing in um, our faith series with week two. So as we get ready to watch this video, I want you to think about this question. Is our faith in Jesus about what we can see? or is it about what our hope is in? I'm excited to hear what you learn in this process and um, things that you come up with in answering that question. Um, so get ready, Elsie kids, because God has a word for you. I want you to open up your ears and open up your heart and expect God to speak to you, expect him to show up, expect him to do awesome things again in this week because that's who he is it's who he is he is faithful and he always shows up so i will see you guys in a few minutes and uh just have a lot of fun and we'll see you soon what's that noise oh it's just an alert on the computer that reminds me it's trash pickup day Mike, it's trash pickup day. Quick, grab the garbage and take it outside. It's empty. No, it's full. It's empty. It's weird, it was full this morning. How'd that happen? Harvey. Who's Harvey? He's the invisible man that works at Connect HQ. Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. I'm Edison. And this is the time we learn that sometimes we believe in things we can't see. Hey guys, come over here. This just came in from our field office in Tucson, Arizona. What's that thing in the sky blocking the sun? Is it a monster? I think it's a cloud. Oh, I think I've read about those. Sorry, HQ. We don't get much weather out here other than hot and sunny. I'm Craig from the field office here in Tucson, and this is Maria. We had some questions about faith. Hi, Connect HQ. In church, everyone's always talking about faith, but what is it? Can you explain exactly what is faith? What does it look like? And why do we put our faith in Jesus? I don't understand. We need your help, HQ. Oh boy, oh boy, I love explaining things. What is faith? Maybe we should start with a dictionary definition, or Maybe we should start with a search of the computer's database for pertinent information. No, wait. Professor Malcolm. The research and development group? The RAD group is always running experiments. Professor Malcolm can help me get to the bottom of what faith is. Yeah. Hmm. Doesn't seem like Edison wants our help. In that case, maybe we should do some spring cleaning around here. Nah, that's Harvey's job. <sighs> Not this again. There's no invisible man named Harvey working at HQ. You're probably right. Thank you. I just call him Harvey because I don't know his real name. No, that's not what I'm right about. No. This is so exciting, Professor Malcolm. <laughs> it is. It really is. Uh, there. The first demonstration is ready. Hey, Professor Malcolm. Ah, you're just in time for a little experiment on faith. This is so cool. <laughs> uh, now, Alyssa, take a look at this delicious banana here. It just seems like an ordinary banana. It's not. When I open the peel, this delicious banana will already be sliced. I don't believe you. <laughs> Maybe the RAD group has already developed genetically modified pre-sliced fruit. 
It just sounds like you're pulling my leg. <laughs> so, you don't have any faith in what I'm saying. I don't. I, I, I do. I believe you. <laughs> I do. Ta-da! <laughs> That's amazing! How'd you do that? <laughs> Let me do it. Let me show her. <laughs> if you take the needle, insert it inside the banana, wiggle it straight back and forth inside the banana. It creates a cut in the banana. <laughs> you repeat that every place along the banana where you want to cut. That's pretty clever. Thanks for showing me the demonstration, <laughs> Professor Malcolm. My pleasure. <laughs> That's a neat trick, but what does it have to do with Faith? Even though I assured Alyssa that the banana was sliced, she didn't trust me. Faith involves trust. But I believe that the banana was sliced. Well, you believe because you saw me use the needle to slice the banana. Faith is believing in what you can't see. What I can't see? There's a Bible verse that explains what I mean. It's from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1. We can say it like this. Hebrews 11, 1. Hebrews 11, 1. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being certain of what we do not see. It is being certain of what we do not see. Faith is knowing something is real or true, even though I can't see it? Exactly! See? The floors have been mopped, the buttons have been polished, even the gunk between the keyboard keys has been removed. It's probably just Luke cleaning up. He likes a nice and tidy HQ. Okay, but even the trinkets in the observatory have been dusted and he hates dusting. Everybody hates dusting. Not Harvey. He happily does all the mundane tasks that nobody wants to do. I still don't understand how someone could believe in things they can't see. And yet you do it all the time. No, I don't. I'm too logical for that. <laughs> Allow me to demonstrate. For this next experiment, we'll use this banana here. Was that the experiment? Yes. What happened to the banana? You let go of it, it fell, and it went plop. Why? Because you like making messes? <laughs> no. Why did the banana drop? The force of gravity caused it to fall to the ground. So do you believe in gravity? Of course I do. But you said you don't believe in things you can't see. You can't see gravity. No, but I can see what gravity does. I can see the effects of gravity. And it's the same with faith in Jesus. You may not be able to see him. But I can see the good things that he does in my life and in the world. And when you read the Bible, you can see the things God has done through history. <laughs> I seem to recall a video about that very thing. Where did that tablet go? Ah, here it is. This is a 66 pick mixed up into one The book's about God, who he is and what he's done It's the Holy Bible, y'all, with God's truth packed out inside It's alive, a prize to hide in your heart and in your mind Old Testaments are set up for the big event When Jesus crashed the scene with a new arrangement It's history, his story, whose story, God's story Let it blow up all the cages, let this show go live Let his word explode from this video into your life In the beginning, God made everything. He made it perfect. He made us, too, in his image. He loves us and wants to have a relationship with us. Sadly, Adam and Eve disobeyed God. That sin brought death into the world and broke our relationship with God. It also broke God's perfect world. Sin spread throughout the whole world. Everyone sins, and the result of sin is death. But sin couldn't stop God from loving us. He had a plan. Because of His love for us, 
God sent His Son, Jesus, into the world. Sin broke our relationship with God, but Jesus came to fix it. Jesus healed sick people and performed many other miracles. He welcomed lonely people. He taught people about God's love. His perfect life shows us what love looks like. Even though Jesus never sinned, He died on a cross for our sins because He loves us. By doing this, He was carrying out God's plan to fix our relationship with Him. Three days later, Jesus rose from the dead, breaking the power of sin and death. He spent time with His followers, teaching them. Then He returned to heaven. Now Jesus lives forever. Jesus did not leave us alone. He sent His Holy Spirit to live inside everyone who trusts Him. The Spirit gives us power to live the way God created us to live. One day, when Jesus returns, God will make everything perfect again. He will make a new heaven and a new earth. Everyone who trusts in Jesus will live with Him forever. God loves you. He created you one of a kind. Trusting and following Jesus fixes our broken relationship with God. Are you ready to be a part of God's story? The Bible tells us some amazing things. <laughs> and those things we believe when we have faith in Jesus. That's the story of the Bible. See? Wow. Have you ever seen such a lack of dust? Luke sure has been busy today. That's the thing. I checked the schedule. Luke isn't even here today. He's not. But then how? But then who? Harvey? Harvey. So having faith in Jesus is just like having faith in gravity or the air we need to breathe? Not quite. Jesus is unchanging. Nothing else we put our faith in is always constant. Gravity always makes things fall. Not if you take a rocket into space. Gravity acts differently up there. Bananas don't plop in space. What? Bananas don't what? The air. Air is unchanging. We rely on it to breathe. But in some places, the air is polluted. And if pollution gets too bad, it's not safe. Y you'd have to wear a mask like this. Uh, may I? Mm. Yeah. There you go. Just in order to survive, respirators like these clean the dirty air and allow you to breathe, mm. provided you aren't holding them too tight over your mouth. Um, can he breathe? Hmm? Oh, mm, oh <laughs> sorry, Mike. Uh, I get carried away sometimes. <sighs> I'm okay. 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 So all the things I believe in, gravity, air, it all has the potential to change? Mm -hmm. I know someone who never changes. Jesus, he stays the same. We're smart to put our faith in him because he never changes. And that sounds like someone I want to follow. I get it now. Mm -hmm. I have faith when I choose to follow Jesus. Faith isn't just about believing in Jesus, it's about trusting him enough to follow him. Sounds like you have everything you need to answer Maria's question. You're right. Thanks, Professor Malcolm, for all your help. You are very welcome. I guess my work here is done. I better get back to the lounge and clean up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Harvey's job. <laughs> Who's Harvey? Oh, the invisible man that cleans HQ. So you have seen Harvey? Oh, of course not. He's invisible. Another example of faith. <laughs> Only this time your faith was misplaced. There, there is no Harvey, it was me. Wait, you dusted the trinkets? You ungunked the keyboards? I like doing all the mundane chores around here. It helps me think. Gotcha! Oh, oh yeah, you. yeah, we did. Good one. <laughs> so good. What? Uh, we, we knew it was you, Edison, all along. Mm -hmm. mm. 
Yeah, we just, we just wanted to show you how silly it was when you put your faith in someone other than Jesus. <laughs> well done, you two, well done. <laughs> yep, we got you. Oh, I can't believe you fell for that was it. such a good one, wow. <laughs> Did you know it was Edison? No, you made me believe there was an invisible man. Look, another cloud. I think that's an airplane. Hey, we just got a message from HQ. Let's check it out. Hi, I'm Edison. I was very excited to get your questions about what faith is and why do we have faith in Jesus? Well, the Bible tells us this in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews 11, one. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being certain of what we do not see. Basically, we put our faith in things we can't see every day. We believe that when we jump up, we just won't go flying away. Gravity will bring us back down. We have faith that the air we need to breathe is all around us, even though we can't see it. We can't see gravity or air, but we can see and feel what they do. It's the same with Jesus. We can't see him, but we can see what he has done in our lives and in history. When we read the Bible, we get to see Jesus' his story in action. His love, his kindness, his forgiveness. Even though we have faith in gravity and air, the truth is they can change depending on the situation or the environment. Professor Malcolm helped me to understand that Jesus is unchanging. We can put our faith in him because we know that he stays the same. Jesus deserves our faith and trust more than anyone or anything else. So what does it mean to have faith in Jesus? Here's the answer. I have faith when I choose to follow Jesus. We know what it is to trust Jesus when we learn from him and follow him. Thanks for your great questions, Maria. I hope you learned something because I know I did. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Thanks HQ for helping me understand what faith is and why it's a smart thing to put my faith in Jesus. All right, welcome back LC Kids. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, man, we are so excited for you and we want to celebrate with you. So please um, have your parents let the office know, um, know that we are just so excited and love you so much. Um, let's review our point for this week. Okay. And so our point is I have faith when I choose to follow Jesus. Okay. So we're going to slow that down. We're going to shout it back at me because you know, that's my favorite. Um, are you guys ready? Okay. I have faith when I choose to follow Jesus. All right. That's what it's about guys. It's not about how we feel. It's not about what we see. Our faith comes from choosing to follow Jesus. It's knowing who he is and what his word says. So this week, I really want you um, just to begin to think about that. And I want you to think about how can you start building your faith and how can you allow God to start working um, that in you um, so that you can just be filled supernaturally with faith, which is really re needed right now when there so many things are kind of not the same and they don't stay true and um, things that have always been aren't anymore. And so God is, he's never changes. He is the same yesterday and today and tomorrow and forever. And so I, I want to encourage you guys to um, really dig in this week with Jesus and let him speak to you and begin to build that faith in you. Cause it, you partner with God to do that. Okay. You don't have to do it on your own. Just like everything else, Jesus does that with you and for you. So can't wait uh, to check in later with you guys this week, check back on Tuesday and Thursday, um, get ready to practice your Bible verse. Cause you know that we're going to do that on Tuesday and, um, uh, we'll see you then. Let's close in prayer. Just know how much I love you guys and uh, I'm praying for you all the time. Um, so I'm super glad that you were with us today. Uh, Jesus, you're so good. We love you so much. I thank you for these kids. I thank you for continued opportunities to serve and love them. God, I just pray for just supernatural faith uh, to begin to grow in them in this week. Holy Spirit, just breathe on them. Let them um, experience and encounter you in real and tangible ways. 
God, I pray that you will um, just lead them into getting into your word and spending time with you so that they can know your voice and they can know who you are. Um, God, I'm excited for the work that you're starting in them and the work that you're going to finish. Um, I thank you for these little warriors in Christ and warriors for your kingdom. We love you so much. Um, God, protect them throughout this week and just bless them and, um, and their families. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye, Elsie kids. <laughs>